everybody. Welcome back to the lab. Um, today we're going to do a lab that's called the biochemistry lab, and I'm going to walk you through it really fast. You should have open on another tab your biochemistry data tables. So there's a, a paper that you're going to be filling out while you watch me do the lab, and I'm going to do the lab as fast as I can. For you guys, it would normally take you about two days to get through everything, and I'm going to try to get it done super, super quick. So I got everything prepared ahead of time. Um, let me show you some of the stuff that we're going to be working with. It's called the Biochemistry Lab. Um, and the reason it's called the Biochemistry Lab, I'm going to bring this up a little bit closer. Um, we're going to be testing different foods in this lab, and these are foods that you should be familiar with. So foods like sweet tarts or macaroni or um, honey. Um, and we're going to test these foods with these three chemical indicators. And your job today is to try to figure out what these chemical indicators are for. I will tell you that they identify different types of macromolecules, different types of biological molecules that we're going to be studying. We haven't studied them yet. And they're going to change color whenever they recognize that particular molecule. Um, so we're going to test all kinds of foods today with these three different indicators. Um, and we're going to look for chemical changes, the color changes. And then um, once we see all the color changes, we're going to try to figure out, well, what, why did they change color? What are they recognizing in that particular food? And you're going to use your prior knowledge about that food to see if you can figure that out. Okay, so let me just tell you really quickly about um, the three indicators we're going to be using. The first one is called Benedict's and it starts out a lovely blue um, and when it tests positive it turns a whole rainbow of colors. The most positive would be red or orange but it can also turn yellow. A very weak positive would be green and then if it didn't turn positive at all it would stay blue. The iodine um, is normally sort of a golden brown color, a yellow brown color. Um, and when it turns positive, it turns either black or like a dark, dark purple, like almost a black purple. And then for burettes, this last one over here, it actually has to be used in concert with um, sodium hydroxide. They have to be used together. But burettes is normally a blue color also, but it turns a very faint lavender. Um, and yeah, and so we're going to be looking for that color change with the burettes today if, if it's positive. And then we're going to try to figure out, well, what are these different things testing for? So the first one we're going to work with today is the Benedict. So I'm going to walk you over and I'm going to show you what I've already prepared. I've got my camera on a cart. You can look out, see our building again. There's the flag out front. Okay, so here's the all the equipment that I have, all the foods that I've already mixed up and everything. And I have these test tubes ready to go right here. And these test tubes have in them um, all the foods that are listed on your, or that you need to list on your data table. And I'll say them as we're doing them. I crushed all of them. So for example, there are Smarties or Sweet Tarts in this first test tube. I crushed them. And then I added water if they were not already liquid. Um, honey is already a liquid, so I didn't add any water to them. Okay, so now I'm going to walk over to our... Um, to our hot plate that's already going, and I'm going to start boiling these with some hey, Benedict's. Hey, if you're in the building, please call 4711. Well, hey, that was some lousy timing. I guess I have to pause for a moment. All right, now we're ready to go again after we were so rudely interrupted. Okay, so what we do for this particular test, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to start with the Smarties. So on your data table, the first thing that you're going to write down is Smarties. And I'm adding Benedict's until it is definitely a blue color. And then I drop it into the boiling water. And we'll wait. It says to wait two minutes. But if you see any kind of a color change at any point, um, you can go ahead and say that that's a positive test. Now, on your data table, you can either put pluses and minuses for positives and negatives. Or you could write down the color of the color change. So, for example, as this one is changing color, you might want to write down what color it's changing. I'm going to go ahead and get the honey ready. I'll mix it up a little bit because the honey is so thick it doesn't mix with this very well. All right, looks like we're done with the Smarties, and the Smarties turned a nice, lovely orange. That is definitely a positive result. We'll go with the honey next. And while, so make sure that you write down that that was a positive result, and now you write down honey in your data table. That's the next food we're testing. And we're going to wait to see if it's a positive result. And I'm going to get the next one ready, which is cereal. So while you're, um, you should have written down honey, and now you're going to write down cereal. And I am definitely seeing a positive result with the honey. It is changing to a lovely color. 
sort of a reddish orange, I think. It looks nice. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see it clearly. So good reddish orange, that's definitely a positive. Now I'm putting in the cereal. So you should write down cereal and we'll give the cereal a moment to um, change color if it's going to. Um, the next one is macaroni. So you could just write pasta. You have a little less space than I have. So I'm gonna add um, some of the Benedicts to the pasta and I'll mix it up to make sure that it's well mixed. And I'm waiting on that cereal, and I, you guys, I'm not seeing much of a color change. The others changed a lot faster than this one. So I'm going to say that this is a negative. It stayed blue, so we'll say that the cereal is a negative, and let's go ahead and try the pasta. So if you haven't written down pasta, get that written down. And I'm going to prep the next one. The next one um, is a little bit of a mistake on my part. The next one is, um, it's supposed to be navy bean. And the reason I wanted navy beans is that navy beans are white. Um, all I had handy were lentil beans and lentil beans are green. And so they can affect the color change just because they're green. Um, so I'm hoping it's okay. But let's go back and take a look at our macaroni. I would say that our macaroni stayed blue. So that is a negative. We'll try, whoa, watch me break things. We'll try the lentils next. Give them a moment and see if there's a color change with the lentils. And while we're getting the lentils ready, I'm going to go ahead and get egg white. That's what this one is. I had to think for a second. We'll get the egg white prepared. So you should have written down lentils, and then underneath it you write egg white. And it looks like nothing's happening with those lentils. They're staying blue. So we'll say that that's a negative for the lentils, or you could write blue. This is the egg white. We'll go with the egg white next. I'm gonna get the next one ready. The next one is tuna. We'll get some of that Benedict's in there. And we'll mix it all up, and the tuna we'll te test next. Looks like we're getting some weird color on the some weird color on the eggs. I don't know if you can see that. That's kind of a lavender color, but interestingly, that's not a positive. The only colors that count as positive for Benedict's are um, whoops, red, orange, yellow, and then green is a little bit of a positive. So that's still, even though it changed a funny purple color, that still counts as a negative. And then this last one that we're doing here, I say last one, there's two that I'm gonna have to say to you. Um, because I couldn't get a hold of those. Um, this next one is tuna. So we're waiting on tuna right now. Um, and you're in the Benedict's column. And while we're waiting for tuna, I'm going to have you add two more foods that I couldn't get a hold of. The first food was applesauce. And under applesauce, it should have turned a beautiful red shade of red um, color. So I'm sorry we didn't get to see that one. So the applesauce is definitely a positive, And you would write red. And, um, and then the other one, while we're waiting on the tuna, um, the other one was that I didn't have was potato. And potato is definitely a negative. Potato stays sort of that blue color. Sometimes it turns a little bit green, but we're gonna say potato is a negative today. All right, and once again, we have no color change. It got a little darker, but we don't, we say that that's not red, blue, I'm sorry, we say it's not red, orange, yellow, or even green. Um, so the tuna was negative. So let me make sure you're clear on all the things that you were supposed to have written down. Um, bring that back up here. Let's see. We should have started with sweet tarts was positive. Honey was positive. Um, cereal was negative. Um, what's this? It changed a little bit of color. That's the pasta now. Um, pasta did turn a little bit of color, uh, so that's a slight positive. But if you wrote negative, that's great. That's no problem. Um, here we had the lentils. They were negative. We had the egg white, that was negative, and we had the tuna, and that was negative. And then I told you two more, verbally I told you those, applesauce is a positive and potato is a negative. All right, I'm gonna pause here, I'm gonna get set up for the next experiment, and then we'll take a look. All right, wow, that was fast, I'm back. Um, I got the same test tubes prepared, but this time we're gonna take a look at iodine. Iodine doesn't require any boiling. So we're gonna see what happens um, when we add iodine. I'm gonna put it in front of this white board so that you can see the color change maybe best of all. And we said that with, I'm gonna scoot that over a little bit. 
We said that with iodine, um, it should turn a dark purple or even black if it's a positive test. So I'm starting with the sweet tarts. That's a negative. It stayed yellow brown. I'm going to the um, honey. That is a negative. It stayed yellow brown. I'm doing the cereal. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a gruesome positive. So the cereal is a positive. Next is the pasta, the macaron. Ooh, that is a positive. It turned that purple black color. Okay, that was the pasta. All right, next are the lentils. Let's see what the lentil. Ooh, the lentils definitely. Oh, I did not expect that. That's a surprise result for me. I know how most of them are supposed to turn out, but I did not expect the lentils to be that way. Okay, so that was a positive for the lentils. Now we're going to try the egg. And the egg is a negative. So whatever this stuff is testing for, whatever iodine is testing for, it is not in egg. And last we'll try tuna. And what do we get for the tuna? Ooh, that is an unexpected one for me also. I don't usually expect this one to turn positive. That's very interesting. Okay, um, so you should have written those down. I'll review them again really quickly. Um, Smarties, negative. Um, honey, negative. Cereal, positive. Pasta, positive. Um, what was this? Um, the lentils, um, positive. Egg yolk, negative. Tuna, positive. And then there were the two that I didn't get my hands on. So we would have had applesauce. And applesauce gives a slight positive, um, but it'd be more of a false positive. And then potato absolutely gives a positive. So potato is definitely one that would turn black if we had it. So add applesauce, positive, well, plus minus you could write down. Um, and then potato is definitely a plus. All right, I'm going to pause again and get the last set of, well, it's not the last set, but I'm going to get the next set of test tubes. Wow, back again. All right, um, we are let, ready for the last part of part one. So I've reset the test tubes again. So they're the exact same test tubes, Smarties, um, honey, that kind of thing. Um, and I have already added in um, sodium hydroxide. So this last test that we're going to do, um, it requires two bottles. You have to add sodium hydroxide in first. And then this one is called Burettes. Um, sometimes students mix it up for, with the first test. The first test is called Benedict's. It's a slightly different shade of blue. Um, and the Benedict's we have to boil. The Burettes we do not. So we're going to do the Burettes test right now. And we're going to see um, when it is positive. Now, technically, when I squirt this in, I'm supposed to roll it between my hands to get the chemicals to mix. These are very nasty chemicals. Um, and they have to be, I have to be wearing goggles for these. So that first one was a negative. Nothing happened. With this particular test, if it turns a, a lovely shade of lavender or even a vibrant purple, then it's a positive. This is a negative for, so the sweet tarts were negative or Smarties, I'm sorry, they were negative. Um, honey was negative. Let's do the cereal. I see some blue in the cereal down there. Let's see if it turns purple. This is why I have it against the whiteboard, um, was so that we could see if any purple was showing up. That's definitely blue still. So blue doesn't count, just needs to be purple. There's a little bit of a grayish color. So the, the blue one was cereal. Now I'm looking at the pasta. Still sort of a grayish blue here, but we're not gonna call that purple yet. Now this one is the one I wasn't, I'm not, sure how it's going to turn out because these are green and I don't know how that affects the results. So I don't know if we're going to see a good color change with this one or not, but we'll see what we can figure out. Give it just a moment. That is definitely a disgusting gray color. It's not what we were hoping for at all. Bring it closer to the camera. Um, maybe I'll let this one sit for just a minute because it looks like it is changing color over a little time. So this is one that we do expect to be positive. This is um, definitely one that would turn um, purple or lavender. So I'm going to give it a moment to see if it will change color. Um, so we'll kind of set these aside and put this one right there so we can look at that again in just a moment. Let's add burettes to this one. And ooh, that was really easy. That one was super fast. So we definitely had a positive on that one. 
And then our last one, so that was the egg white. And then our last one that I have today is the tuna. I'll mix that one up. Oh yeah, that's a perfect purple. So we know that that one's definitely purple. Let's take a look back at the bean one. Yeah, I'd say that that has turned purple. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give the bean one, the lima bean, no, not lima, lentil bean, sorry, um, a positive. Okay, so then the last two that I don't have that we didn't do were the applesauce, and the applesauce I know is always negative for this particular test, and the other one is the potato, and I know that the potato is always negative for this test. So now what we need to do is try to figure out, well, what are these tests actually testing for? Maybe I'll walk over here really quickly if I can find my markers. Um, so before we move on to the next section, we need to know what those uh, what those tests were testing for. So for example, we had Benedict's first. Let's see if I can write on the board and see if you can see it. So we had the Benedict's, and what turned positive for Benedict's really strongly, like was really obvious, and you didn't know this one, but um, the applesauce is a very strong positive. Um, the Smarties were a strong positive. Smarties and the honey was a strong positive too. Then we had sort of some other weak positives later on, but these were really the three strong positives. So the question is, what is Benedict's testing for? Well, I want you to think about it and hopefully you already have an idea in your mind, but what do these three things have in common that maybe the others don't have? So for example, tuna doesn't test positive for Benedict's, but Smarties does. So what does Smarties have in it um, that maybe Benedict's is recognizing and changing color? And if you said sugar, you are spot on. So all the way at the bottom of your data table where it says conclusion, under um, Benedict's, you're gonna write sugar. That's what Benedict's tests for is sugar. So now let's take a look at I'm gonna actually skip over to the last one, the burette. So make sure you're going to the right column. So go all the way over to the burette column because I feel like burettes is a little bit easier than the iodine is. So let's write down burettes here and let's talk about the ones that were definitely positive. We definitely had a positive with the lentils, although that took a minute, but it did do it, even though they were green to start with. Um, and then the vibrant purple we got with egg white, and with tuna. So what do you suppose burettes is testing for that beans test positive, eggs test positive, and tuna? Obviously it's not sugar because those aren't high in sugar. So what could the, um, what could burettes be testing for? Hopefully you have a guess. And if you guess that it was testing for um, protein, you were spot on. So all the way on the far right side of your um, data table, would you write down under conclusion that protein is what it's testing for? And then the last one is the one that's tricky because it gives us a lot of false positives and a lot of ones that are in the middle. So I'm going to teach it to you um, by giving you a couple um, hints. Um, it's a little bit harder when you have to do it yourself um, in the lab. So the ones that test most positive, that are just black as could be, um, the ones that really help, that would be cereal and pasta and potato and then we do get some others that um, test positive also but can you imagine what is it that those kinds of foods have in common what do you think of when you think of those foods you don't necessarily think of protein um, you don't necessarily think of sugar unless it's a sugary cereal i will mention that it was um plain cheerios so those are pretty close to a sugar-free food so it wasn't sugar um, I'm giving you time to think. So what they were testing for actually is starch. Those are all starchy foods. So iodine recognizes starches. So now that we've gotten that far, now that you know what the three tests test for, now we're ready for the next section of the lab. We're ready to figure out um, what's in these different foods and, and what's happening. So in part two, we're going to test two different types of pop. One of the types of pop, I'm going to bring it over here because I already have it ready to go. So one of the types of pop is diet pop. And one of the other types of pop, oh, I'm going to get my, it's not boiling anymore. I better turn it up. It might not work. I might have to pause for a minute. 
So one of the types of pop that we're going to be looking at is regular pop, and the other type of pop is diet pop. Now, you only get to do one test on this. You could do the Benedict's test, the iodine test, or the Burette's test. If you're trying to figure out which pop is regular and which pop is diet, you only need to do one test. What test do you suppose is the one test we're going to do? It's blank on your data table right now, um, purposely, because I didn't want you to know ahead of time which one to do. Okay, so if you guess, I'm trying to waste time so you can have time to think about it. Um, if you guess that we need to do the Benedict's test, because Benedict's is testing for sugar, and that's the difference between regular and diet pop is whether it has sugar in it, um, then you were right. So we're going to go ahead and test both the pops. I turned the heat up on my um, hot plate, but I it's definitely not boiling. So we'll give it a minute and see if it works. Um, and if it does not, I will pause the video. I will pause the video and jump right to the conclusion. So I'm going to go ahead and put Benedict's in. So this is the, the first test that we did. And this is one that we have to boil. And that's um, pop A. So that's the regular pop. So on your data table, you, oops, that's not what I meant to say at all. I said completely the wrong thing. That's pop A. So on your data table, you're supposed to write A. And then this is pop B. We're going to go ahead and put pop B in here. And you can see there's a B on it so that we can see it clearly. Oh, and you know what? It turns out that even though the water is not boiling, it is warm enough that we can see that pop A is already changing color. So pop A is testing positive for sugar. So that means that pop A, under your conclusion, you should say that pop A is the regular pop and pop B, which did not change color, is the diet pop. All right, we're ready for the next section. I got that one ready ahead of time also. There's that nice vibrant color for the sugar test. All right, let's get this one out. And now we're ready for the next section. This is with two Kool-Aids. Um, the first Kool-Aid, I got to think about which one. I. This first Kool-Aid is homemade Kool-Aid. Um, and it's specifically a clear Kool-Aid so that it didn't screw up our um, color results. So this is one that I made with homemade sugar. And that's a funny way of saying it. The sugar that you buy at the store. So this is made with a sugar that's called sucrose. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And then I have another Kool-Aid. This is a, a Kool-Aid that um, comes in one of those um, pouches that you push a straw in. Um, so this is a pre-made Kool-Aid. And I will tell you that the sugar in this one is high fructose corn syrup. So they both have sugar in them. So this is the one with high fructose corn syrup, and this is the one with sucrose. So we'll give it a minute to see what happens. Um, the only difference really between the two of them is the type of sugar that they have in them. So I'm hoping that it'll change, and it looks like already the one with high fructose corn syrup is changing. Now, does that mean that there's something bad about high fructose corn syrup and something good about um, regular store-bought sucrose sugar? No, not at all. All we're seeing here is the limit of the Benedict's test. The Benedict's test does not recognize all types of sugar. It recognizes certain types of sugar. In this case, it recognizes fructose, which is a fruit sugar, and that's why applesauce tests positive also but it does not recognize sucrose. So for your conclusions, you can just tell me the names of the two sugars. The one in the, the store-bought um, is called fructose, high fructose corn syrup, and the one in the homemade um, is sucrose, and then it, it doesn't recognize the sucrose. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna get set up for the next section. Shazam, back again, everybody. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to do part four of this lab, and I have decided on the fly that I'm not going to do part five, the part that um, involves potato chips and um, and paper towels. Um, basically, for part five, we take a baked potato chip and a fried potato chip, and we smash them down on a paper towel, and then you um, 
sweep away the dust, so to speak, um, after a couple minutes, and you'll see that there's a big grease stain under the fried um, potatoes, and you see that there's, um, under the baked um, potato chips, they look almost dry. Um, and so the potato, that's it's kind of a dorky one. It's like something you do in elementary school. But anyway, um, it's a test for fat. So we're going to be looking at fats during this unit, and that's why we sometimes include that one. But we're not going to include that one today. So this will be the last part of the test that we're doing, the last part of the experiment. Um, this time, you have three substances that you know and are familiar with. We've got banana. Let's see if I can show them to you. We've got banana. We've got milk. And we've got, oh, I was supposed to add liquid to those. Um, we've got um, sunflower seeds. And now you know already what these three tests test for. You know that Benedict's tests for sugar, you know that iodine tests for starch, and you know that Burette's tests for protein. So before I start to show you the results, I want you to hypothesize, and you're supposed to write this in your lab, what do you think they're gonna test positive for? So what does banana have in it? And you can be totally wrong, it doesn't matter, but does banana have um, sugar, starch, protein, all of them, two of them, one of them, what's it going to test positive for? So write down your hypothesis. What will milk test positive for? What's your guess? Write down your hypothesis. And then what will um, sunflower seeds and write down your test and for, test positive for? And then write down your hypothesis. I'm going to pause for just a second to add some water to their sunflower seeds. All right, we're back again, and the sunflower seeds now have water in them. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, we'll start by doing the um, doing the banana first. So I'm going to start with Benedict's solution. That's the one that tests for sugar. I'm going to put the Benedict's solution in it, and then I'm going to get it boiling. And while we are waiting for it to boil, I'm going to go ahead and do the iodine test. So this also is banana. And I'm going to go ahead and squirt the iodine right in. With iodine, we don't need to boil it or anything. We're going to mix that up a little bit. Give it just a moment. And what we're looking for is to see if it changes to a black or dark purple. And it's definitely getting darker. That one's a little bit hard to see, I think. Maybe I'll give that just a moment more so that we know for sure the color change on that. Yeah, yeah, I think we're pretty solid now. I think that counts as a black color. So we're going to say banana is a positive for the iodine. So what did that mean that banana has in it? And let's do the last one. This is the Burette's test for the banana. So this one is testing for protein. I already added the sodium hydroxide. So I rub it between my hands just to mix it. This is kind of the dangerous one. I don't want to get in my eyeballs. And I take a look. I'm going to hold it against the screen there. I'll, I'll let you know if I see a color change, but right now I see no color change. So I would say negative for burettes. And we'd say positive for the iodine. And we would say, let's take a look, looks like a positive for the Benedicts. So positive for the sugar on that one. All right, let's move on to milk. Milk, we're going to do our Benedicts test. We have to boil that one. So we'll get that one boiling. And then um, we'll do the iodine test. This one should have good results immediately because there's since it's a liquid, it, it touches it all very quickly. So this is a negative for iodine, no starch in it. And then the last one is the burettes. And this is the one that tests for protein and it turns purple. Gonna mix it with my hands a little bit. Ooh, lovely shade of purple. Make sure you can see that. So that's a positive for the milk. So the milk definitely has protein in it. Oh, and take a look. Look at this weird color. Now that's unexpected. Um, that is a negative for Benedict. Benedict is supposed to turn red, orange, yellow, or green, but not purple. So even though it's a funny color, it's still a negative for the... Oh, wait a minute. That's milk, wasn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, it should have turned positive for sure. I wonder if I want to try that one one more time. Did I wait too long on it? Um, I'm going to try that one one more time. We'll come back to that one and see if there's a reason that that one didn't turn out the way we expected. All right, so we're going to do um, we're going to do the sunflower seeds on this one, and I'll mix it up a little bit and get that boiling. We will do the iodine test on the sunflower seeds. Oh, you know what? I think I threw out all my milk. I don't think we can do that one. So this is the iodine test on the sunflower seeds, and I would say that that's a big fat negative for that. 
And then let's do the burette's test for the sunflower seeds. This one has a funky color, so it might be very hard to see if it turns purple or not. We might need to give it just a little bit of a weight on that one. Boy, oh, it's just so much color, you might not be able to see it. That's no fun to end on a bad color. Oh, look at this weird test. Okay, so this is for the sunflower seeds. We're gonna say this is a slight positive, um, but for the most part, it's a negative. It didn't turn that red, orange, or yellow color that we expect when you have sugar in something. So we'll say that this is, it's a slight positive, but mostly negative. And this one is supposed to turn purple. I wonder if we give it a few minutes if it will turn purple. Let me review because we've had a few funky colors. So let me make sure you feel like you know exactly what you're doing. So with the, um, with the banana, it's a positive for Benedict. It's a positive for iodine. And it is a negative for burette. For the milk, there's a little bit of green down there. But why there's only purple, I don't know. It usually... Usually when I do this lab, it turns a beautiful red-orange color, and I have no idea why this one turned purple. I wonder if I added the wrong stuff to it. But um, this one should be a positive. So even though it didn't turn out great, let's write it as a positive for the milk. And then for the iodine, it was negative for the milk, did not turn black. And then, ooh, look at that, very nice. For the burettes, it was definitely positive for the milk. And then the very last one, We'll say this is a false positive. It's a little bit positive for the Benedicts, um, but I think I would rather have you write negative. So this is the sunflower seed, so Benedicts. Let's go ahead and call that a negative. For the iodine, it is definitely a negative. It did not turn black. And then for the burettes, oh, it's a bummer. We can't see it because there's so much color already from the seeds themselves that we can't see the purple color. But Definitely, definitely sunflower seeds are full of protein. And so this has purple in it. It's just that it's disguised by the um, yellowish orange color that you can't see it. So for the burettes, let's go ahead and write um, a positive for it. So now what you need to do, make sure that you have all your conclusions and everything written up um, in the data tables. And then the very last question just asks you to state, um, to restate what are the tests and what are they testing for. So tell me what Benedict's does, um, what colors it changes, and then um, what it's testing for. Tell me what um, iodine does, what color it changes, and what it tests for. And tell me what burettes does and what color it tests for. And that should be it. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great rest of your day.